Hi everyone, it's Aaron here from Push Square, and would you believe that GTA 5 has come to yet another console platform? In this case, it is of course the PlayStation 5. Yes, after well over a year in waiting, the next-gen version of Rockstar's crime-focused magnum opus is finally here to check out now. Our very own Sammy Barker has been taking it for a spin this past week or so, which I'm happy to dive into today. Grab the take. A rendezvous with you, and you get out of there. Does that uh, work for everyone? Oh, sh here we go again. Grand Theft Auto V is one of the greatest selling games of all time, shifting over 160 million copies in the decade or so since it first debuted. First released on the PlayStation 3 in 2013, the game was a mainstay on software sales charts throughout the entire PS4 generation as well, and now it's launched on PlayStation 5. For those of you playing on Sony's new gen console, you'll be able to download GTA Online for free, while the single player campaign will carry an introductory cost until the 14th of June 2022. So the question here is, is GTA 5 on PlayStation 5 worth the upgrade? Rockstar has barely touched Los Santos since it launched on PS4 in 2014. That means, regardless of whether you invested in a PS4 Pro or have been using PlayStation 5's backwards compatibility, the console version of the game has been locked at 30 frames per second in 1080p for the past eight years. Sheesh. Unsurprisingly then, Seeing the release presented at 60 frames per second in higher resolution is mind-blowing, even if it's not really all that impressive by modern open-world standards. The developer has also added native HDR support, and while some scenes look a little too bloomy for our tastes, you can almost feel the sandbox's sun on the back of your neck whilst playing. There are also three graphics options now available. Fidelity has the best image quality, and it appears to resolve a native 4K at a smooth 30 frames per second. Performance drops the resolution ever so slightly. It's still way above the PlayStation 4 version's 1080p, but presents an equally smooth 60 frames per second. We tried triggering some explosions and the frame rate holds well, although your mileage may vary under significant duress. The third option is Performance RT which blends ray tracing with 60 frames per second refresh rates. Although we honestly couldn't tell much difference between the two permutations of performance, so you may want to wait for someone with a magnifying glass to explain exactly what is going on here. All three modes look great to our eye though, although considering how slow and cumbersome GTA 5's controls can feel at the best of times, the 60 frames per second options are literal game changers. Aiming is significantly less sluggish, while driving through Los Santos with the new GTA Online tuning upgrades, more on those later, feels positively Wipeout-esque. The game does still show its age, however. There are textures which are clearly ancient that can still pop up from time to time, and the character models, particularly their faces, just can't cut it against contemporary releases like Horizon Forbidden West or even The Last of Us Part II. Still, we're talking about a title from 2013 here, almost 10 years ago. Loading times are significantly improved now too. One neat trick is that once you've booted the game for the very first time, it skips all the annoying logos and copyright information thereafter, a 30 second saving alone. Phew! From there, we clocked 11 seconds from the main menu into the single player campaign, and just six seconds whenever you're changing characters. Booting up GTA Online still takes a little time, around 44 seconds roughly, but the flow of the multiplayer mode is much faster overall, allowing you to load in and out of key locations like the Diamond and Casino Resort significantly faster than you could before. As previously alluded to, the only real content change between GTA 5 on PS5 and PS4 is the addition of HAL's special works in GTA Online, which allows you to add tuning upgrades to select vehicles in order to make them go faster. And these speed improvements are actually significant. Pair it with the 60 frames per second performance and you can go insanely fast. There is still quite a bit of pop in, even when not traveling at these blistering new speeds, but we suppose not even the PlayStation 5's lightning-fast SSD can prevent that. 
Rockstar's done little to improve the flow of multiplayer, unfortunately. A new main menu screen allows you to jump directly to the featured content, but there's a great chance that Los Santos will still prove quite overwhelming to newcomers. And you'll need our GTA Online guide, available now on the Pushquare website, if you're playing for the first time this week. You'll still have to wait exorbitant lengths of time for lobbies to populate, and some of the menus beggar belief, really. Years and years of bolting content onto a game not originally designed for it has made the entire experience a bit of a mess, if we're honest. While work has started on GTA 6, it could still be years away. The single-player campaign, despite being dated in some areas, is still laugh out loud funny at times, and it still has some truly memorable moments in it. We played through a handful of our favourite missions, including the Life Invader sequence, and there's still nothing else quite like this. The open world, too, is arguably unparalleled. Not even the massively anticipated Cyberpunk 2077 has a world this alive and this believable. Ultimately, it's a true testament to Rockstar's original vision that a release from 2013 still has so much character. So, time for the big question. Is it worth the upgrade? Well, do you like GTA 5? Aside from the PC release, this is far and away the best version of Los Santos you can find on a console. With fast loading times, sharp visuals, and a silky smooth frame rate that helps eliminate some of the original's gameplay issues. We didn't even mention the DualSense support, which is brilliantly implemented, and even captures tiny details like rain. For the introductory offer price, around £8.75 in the UK and £9.99 stateside, it represents great value for money, even if you've paid full price in the past. But if you've played these missions before and you don't have any interest whatsoever in GTA Online, it's going to prove a more difficult sell, we suppose. The problem is, we don't think you'll be getting your GTA fix for quite some time, meaning that GTA 5 on PlayStation 5 will still represent the best of the best when it comes to open world crime em ups. And there you have it, our hands-on impressions of GTA 5 on PlayStation 5. At least the console number and franchise installment entry now match up correctly, right? Anyways, have you revisited Los Santos yet? Or do you intend to? Maybe even for the first time? Be sure to let me know in the comments section below. And then, once you've done that, be sure to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it or even found it useful, and consider subscribing to the Pushquare YouTube channel to stay up to date with everything else PlayStation related. Until next time guys, thanks as ever for watching, and I'll see you in the next one!